Good morning and welcome to Grow Connection Circle. Welcome Ima Labor, Malka Bracha, Bacheva, Carol. So we always start off with some Tehillim in unity for our brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael. We'll continue with going according to the Yom. Today we start with Yod Ches, which is actually the song of David. There are there are nine songs that the Jewish people sang throughout history, expressing gratitude for Hashem's salvation. The first one was David was sorry Adam, thanking Hashem for creating the world, and he sang it when he when he celebrated the first Shabbos. And, and we have many more, like Yahushua's song and Hannah's song, Devorah's song. So this is the song of David, where he recounts all of the many miracles that Hashem performed for the Jewish people in the past. And, and then he thanks Hashem for his own miracles. And that's, that's really the way that a Jew thanks Hashem. We don't just thank our, Hashem for our personal miracles. We also look back and we see that we're part of a chain of history. And that's why we are confident that as we go forward, we we know the story, we know how it ends, and we know that Hashem will certainly save his people, just like he always has. And David Amalek's words can give us strength because he went through the worst tests and challenges a person could ever imagine. And David is every one of us. We are all David battling the inner and the outer battles of our lives. So let's let's start together. <clears throat> okay. Lam na teach la ever a deny la David a shir di ver la deny as divre hashira has ice. Beyam he seal a deny a simi kaf kal ivav a miyad shaul. You see, he says these are the words of this song on the day that Hashem saved him. David Hamelach. And he said, I love you, O Hashem, my strength. Hashem, you are my rock. Yesterday we painted rocks, my fortress, my rescuer, my God, my rock. I will take refuge in him. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my refuge. Notice there are two words for rock, Sela and Tzor. With praise I call to Hashem and from my enemies I will be saved. Bands of death have encompassed me and streams of scoundrels would affright me. But Sarli akra denai ve ela la hea shavea yishma me halai. Kaili vishavasi la fan of tavai ba azna. When I am in distress, I call upon a sham. Yes, I cry out to my God. Out of his temple, he hears my voice and my cry comes before him in, in his ears. But tik ashva tir asha are to maiste harim. Your gazuva iska shuki hara lai. Allah Ashan Ba Apa Vaish me Piv Taihal Gekalam Baru Mimenu. Ba Yet Shamayim Ba Yared Ba Ba Arafal Tachas Raglov. Ba Yirka Bal Kruf Kruv Vayaif Ba Yedal Kanfe Ruach Yashas Khesha Siswa Sivi Vaisav Sukasa Khashkas Mayim Ave Shekhakim and Igana Daya Vav Avru Barad Bagahale Ish. He sent forth from on high and he took me. He drew me out of many waters. This week is Parshas Nayach. We speak about the Mayim Rabim, the waters from above and the waters from below that symbolize all of the different challenges that we face in our lives. There are the challenges from above. Those are the spiritual challenges. And the ones from below, which are the physical challenges. 
keeping our body safe. And this is a spiritual battle as well as one that we're, you know, we want our Jewish Jewish people to be safe in body and soul. So we ask Hashem to draw us out of many waters. He delivered me from my mighty enemy and from those that hated me, for they were too powerful for me. They confronted me on the day of my calamity, but Hashem was a support to me. The Hashem rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. Tamim titamam im navar tis bara vim akikesh tis patal kiata amani sashia venaim ramais tashbil kiata tair neri adenai alehe ahai yagia hushki. This is my favorite line from this whole Tehillim. For you light my lamp, the Lord my God does light my darkness. Notice that it seems redundant. But the first step is Hashem, you light my lamp. Hashem gave us a neshama and he gave us the light of Tara Mitzvahs. And that is how we have the ability with Hashem's partnership to light up my darkness. Whatever darkness we face, we hold the candle of Hashem, the candle of our soul, the candle of every good deed, every prayer. That is the light in the darkness so it's really saying two separate things because first we need to recognize that we have the lamp of god and then we can go into the battle knowing that we have the light which will dispel the darkness shore for you for by you i run upon a troop and by my god i scale a wall he trains my hands for war you have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has supported me and you have treated me with great humility. You have enlarged my steps and my ankles have not slipped. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them, never turning back until they were consumed. And that's a bracha that we should finish the job this time. I've crushed them so that they cannot rise. Yeah, they are fallen under my feet. And of my enemies, you have given me the back of their necks. Those that hate me, that I may cut them off. They pray, but no one saves them, even to Hashem, but he answers them not. Then I ground them as dust before the wind, as the mud in the streets I did pour them. You allowed me to escape. Lishma. And blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation. Hashem who grants me vengeance and destroys peoples instead of me. Who delivers me from my enemies, even above those that rise against me. You have lifted me from the violent man. You deliver me. 
Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Hashem, among the nations, and to your name I will sing praises. Magdil Yeshua is my Malkai, Vaise Chaser Lim Shichai, Le David, O Lazarai, Ad I Lam. He gives great salvations to his king, and he performs kindness to his anointed, to David and to his seed forever, to all of David's <coughs> descendants, which includes every one of us. This is our story. And this Tehillim is really powerful because we are bringing <coughs> we are bringing this to life when we say it. And it's pretty amazing that we can read the Tehillim in a way that we feel like our words are fighting the spiritual battle because unfortunately we're living this today. And I pray that the story ends just like David HaMelech, that we can tell the story of Hashem's salvation. Chapter 20 is part of today's Yaim. So let's say it together. And then we will grow our bitachon, our security, our bitachon, our trust in Hashem, which will certainly impact the bitachon, the security in the Holy Land of Israel. Lam natseach mizmar David. Yan Khadinai Biyan Sara is a gafha shame elehe yakai. Ishlach as a hamikai dash to Mitsia in Yisadaka. May he send your aid from his sanctuary and may he support you from Tsiyain. Yiskar calm in Haisaha, thy last ha yadashna sela. May he remember all your meal offerings and may he accept your fat burnt offerings forever. May he give you as your heart desires and may he fulfill all your counsel. Let us sing praises for your salvation and let us assemble in the name of our Hashem. May Hashem fulfill all your requests. Now I know that Hashem saved his anointed. He answered him from his holy heavens with the mighty acts of salvation from his right hand. <clears throat> Eleva rechas, be eleva susim, va anach nu beshema, deny elehenu naskir. These trust in chariots and those in horses, but we, <clears throat> we mention the name of Hashem our God. This is our weapon when we dive in here together. Hey, makaru, vinafalu, va anach nu, kam nu vanisaidad. They kneel and fall, but we rise and gain strength. Adonai Hashia Hamelach Yaneinu Viyim Kareinu. Oh Hashem, save us! May Hashem, may the King answer us on the day that we call. Amen. Okay, so now are we ready to grow and build bitachon? We are going to follow the planner that that we made for um, the JGU Press. It was sponsored a year ago by Ida Schatzenstein. And Baruch Hashem, we have this weapon today to increase, to build, to grow the bitachon, both physically and spiritually, because the Lubavitcher Rebbe told people when they were filled with fear and anxiety to learn Shara Bitachon. So as you see, this book <clears throat> is, it has 111 days. It's an agenda. And each day you have a quote from Shara Bitachon <clears throat> and even a coloring page to, to integrate it. Now you could pre-order it because today we are making the last few corrections to it. We're also adding a page dedicating it to Eretz Yisrael, to the Bitachon in Eretz Yisrael. So um, it is dedicated by Ida and David Schattenstein and Linda and Ori Schwartz. <clears throat> and we also want to dedicate it to the safety, to the Bitachon in Eretz Yisrael. So we grow Bitachon 
We start with the seed of faith, which is Amuna, and we grow it to the fruits of Bitachon. Yesterday, we did days one to five. My goal is that we meet daily to complete this book together. And then, of course, we start the cycle again, where everybody will have their own book and we can do it together. So for now, just have a pen and paper. Maybe you want a notebook that you can look back on each day and see your own growth. Um, yesterday, we ended off with a quote from the Rebbe to this person who was filled with fear and anxiety, saying, I'm surprised at your low spirits. A person studies and studies, <clears throat> and now is the time for your practical application. Where is the trust? So he told him in order to, to grow the bitachon, study this shar bitachon three or four times. It's, it's medicine for the neshama. OK, um, I got a very clear blessing from the Rebbe because yesterday my daughter was looking through this. Um, I'll just show you this Dare Her magazine. And I came up to her room to say good night. And she said, I found a picture of you. And I just want to show you because I feel like, wow, I never saw this picture. And <clears throat> is the Rebbe giving me his blessing for fighting the war and unto all of us in the way that is in our power. So I just want to share the picture. <clears throat> Who could find me? <laughs> can you see it? Do I need to make it bigger? Let's see if I can make it. Okay. Yes, make it bigger. Okay, do you see it now? Put the arrow on yourself. So try to find me. It's a profile. <laughs> it's the only oh, face see. that you can actually see that's facing the Rebbe. And I will, let me see if I could get the arrow on it. Hold on. You're being held? This is you little? Yeah. little You're you. in front of the person being held. It's a that's profile. That's what I think. You're right. A, I'll show this, you. This is little Nakamatina. You're on the left. Of course, the rubber passed okay, away. Okay, that's you. I think I see you. When I was 19. I see you. Oh. Right here. I don't even know how to get this. Um... Oh, right here. I'll just show you right here. I was right. right. Exactly, your profile. <laughs> so, and you see how I'm so intently looking and waiting for my turn to get a nickel from the Rebbe. The Rebbe would. So on that note, I'm going to ask everyone to give some charity to Daka, just like the Rebbe taught us to give to Daka to <clears throat> before we dive in, we think about others, and before we we learn also. So um, Susan, welcome. I was just showing. Um, in connection with the letter from the Rebbe that he said to study, study the the gate of trust to build confidence and be tachon, and uh, and then yesterday my daughter Hana was looking through these pictures where the Rebbe was coming out of his out of his room out of Kriyas Torah they were reading the Torah and then on the way the Rebbe distributes coins to children for tzedakah, so I found she found a picture of me. And um, receiving, and everyone there received a nickel to give to charity. So on that, on that note, let's all give some tzedakah. If you have a coin, you can put it in your tzedakah box. And that is um, another way to start off. So welcome, Susan. We're going to, who's also a confidence coach, which in, in English there are many definitions for the word bitachon, and one of them is confidence, also security. Also, so yesterday we learned the definition of bitachon, reliance, what else? Um, trust, tranquility, serenity, everything that we are wishing for <laughs> in these times. So I invite you to take a journey with me. We are on page six of our daily journal, take out a pen and paper and see if you're ready to grow through these beautiful ideas in the gate of trust. So how do we build bitachon? How do we achieve this state of being? 
the, the spiritual journey to trust hinges upon the depths of our understanding of God's providence and greatness. In the same letter that the Rebbe told somebody, you learn and you learn, but when it comes to action, practicality, where is your bitachon? So I'm going to use bitachon to encompass all the definitions. I don't want to just choose one. And bitachon really says it all. And in Israel, security is called bitachon in modern day Hebrew as well. So we want our learning here and our growing in our bitachon to impact the bitachon in Israel, that everyone feels secure once again in their homes and in the streets and everywhere. So how do we achieve this state? It's through understanding, through using our mind to, un to recognize Hashem's providence and his greatness. The broader our recognition of God's infinity, the greater our reliance on his providence and compassion. In the gate of trust, we will learn how to harness five basic beliefs as tools to grow trust. Bitachon. One, a belief that there is a God. Two, a belief in divine providence. Three, a belief that God cares for us. Four, a belief that God is compassionate. And five, an understanding that we must serve God and fulfill the mitzvot. So these five beliefs are tools to grow the trust. And if we have these five, that will build the bitachon inside of us. If I believe in divine providence, that's going to help me trust that everything that's happening in the world is being controlled by a higher power. If I believe that God cares for me, then I'm going to shift into this lens, God cares for me. And maybe today, this, this didn't seem to be a pleasant experience or even a traumatizing experience, but I want to see it through God cares for me. So gratitude is how we start to grow through this. And here are some of the reflection questions. What are you grateful for? So is there anyone here that wants to be the the responder first responder here anybody well okay susan perfect welcome susan axel axelrod confident coach wonder woman guest today on wonder woman wednesday i was thinking to change it to warrior woman so not sure but we are a warrior women of light and um susan has definitely been a part of my journey to grow trust in myself and in in my gifts to the world and together we actually started the online community in 2014 which prepared us for covid and even today to unite jewish women in strength so susan what are you that's what i'm grateful for thank you for being a part of this journey welcome to those who just came in um susan what are you grateful for it's good to see so many of you. Um, I am grateful for my own journey to the light. I'm so grateful that I found and connected to my own energy so that during times of uh, trauma and terror, difficulty, upheaval, or even just worry, um, I have tools and skills to um, protect my heart so that I can be one of the ones to share light. I really mean this uh, from my heart. I'm grateful for this. Thank you, Susan. So we're going to go a little deeper. And we know that you're grateful to cultivate your beliefs, your confidence, and your soul connection. So in recognition, can you recognize one belief that you connect to easily? and one belief that you wish to cultivate and develop? Well, it's hard to choose just one, but um, one belief um, that I connect to deeply is the power of uh, my own mind and thoughts. And honestly, because of, well, being human, 
um, being co-opted um, by darkness is easy. Um, being triggered <laughs> is more constant. And so um, I'm very much recognizing that the strength of uh, perseverance in my mind um, connection, um, strengthening and growing my own energy connection um, is absolutely vital. It's something that um, will be a practice for me for the rest of my life. So I'm already in the belief system of it, but uh, it is a practice that I absolutely will cultivate. And I have to during times of extreme darkness. Wow, that is that is so meaningful and inspiring for all of us. I, I was thinking about a question that somebody asked me, what happens when we're overcome with fear? Is that coming from our animal soul? Is that coming from our heart? So what does it mean to believe that Hashem cares for us, does that mean to believe from your head? But then I'm not in my heart. How do I create that mind-heart connection? And people say the godly soul is from the head and the and the animal soul is from the heart. But really, we want to be in the heart. So people are confused because they think that when they're operating from their soul, then they're just in their belief which remains up here, but then they still feel the disconnect between the heart, which is very powerful, those emotions overcome us. And where is the belief? Where does it go? So um, there in, in this course of study that I'm in, which is exactly connecting up energetically the mind and the body and the soul, um, there, um, it's considered that there are actually three brains, the, the brain in your head, the heart brain, and also the gut brain, the gut brain. And so to answer this question, I think I actually go to the gut brain because to me, uh, that's where your intuition lies. And um, when you're in that fear synapse, um, which, you know, we are, you know, you're human to, to think that you would ever be in control of that. That's a fallacy. This is, I spend a lot of time in my coaching sessions talking about this, that people think all kinds of things. It's just unreal. Cause the first thing is that we're humans. And, um, but back to the idea of trust, um, that it's really, uh, we were created with the minds and the free will to be in charge of ourselves in this way. And so um, I just offer here recognition to uh, trust oneself in connection with Hashem. If you are in trust of Hashem, if you allow the energy in, then you are surrounded in light. And our job is to be in charge of that. So just even in my little tiny space, I'm in a little box here, you know, but in my little tiny corner, you know, whomever it is who touches me uh, feels that light because I'm in trust of myself from my intuition and also my practice of being in charge of my mind and my thoughts. So does that make sense to you, Nahama? Or yes. yes, definitely. So, so to create alignment between the heart that's filled with fear, which is hu human first. And actually our animal soul is first, we're born with it. And we only get our godly soul, which gives us that power of intuition and godly consciousness. It only really fully enters us at 12 and 13, bar and bat mitzvah, which is why that tension is there. And it's really about growing up <laughs> and allowing ourselves to connect to that deeper part of ourselves where there is no fear and being in control of our mind, which will cultivate the healthy emotions. And so that is what we're doing here. That's why it says that a person's spiritual journey is dependent on cultivating their thoughts and contemplating God's greatness. What does that mean? These beliefs that there is a God, there is divine providence. God is compassionate. Even when I, my limited mind does not understand why things are happening, 
it's um the rebel once told somebody that that we are warriors and a warrior doesn't say why is this happening but a warrior says what is there to do right now and before the doing we need the recognition that we are part of a much bigger picture that there's a god that sees a full master plan here so if we take this into now our oneness which is into our heart into an understanding because we are not spiritually bypassing the fear and saying you believe and that's it and don't talk about the fears no i'm recognizing that i'm human first and there are these real fears coming up for me so i go through this choosing my thoughts and recognizing how hashem has saved us like we read it and to him today we read king david's story where he thanks hashem for saving the jewish people and then we end off with and this will be the story for all of David's descendants. That thought now starts to settle into me from my head into my heart. And I hold it and I speak to the fear with that verse of Tehillim, which is way more powerful. It's like a candle in the dark. So in oneness with Hashem, that would be my integration of the words of Tehillim today. To bring, to bring it into my heart. Um, and now I give it over to you. What is a tool, a confidence tool, a way to, to bring that soul alignment between our mind and our heart? So for me, in this case, in this grow that I'm doing, the oneness with Hashem is I accept responsibility. I accept responsibility. And, um, you know, in the humans that we are, even in godliness, in godly connection, I still have my responsibility. And God gave us the opportunity to be in responsibility of ourselves, of our minds, of our bodies, of our souls, of our feelings. And so um, for me in oneness, and then the tool that I would offer um, which I've learned the hard way over a long journey. Um, people who know me today, Nechama knew me in the day, but um, people who know me today don't, don't, don't didn't know the old um, anxious me. And so um, there's one single breath that connects me in oneness if the other pieces are also in place. And so just very quickly in 10 seconds, you basically just lift up your body and you open and when you do this, you can physically take your hands and just open here, just so you can feel you're like opening. And when you feel it, you can feel the opening. And then also that supports us in, to be in alignment with the head where it's supposed to be, the neck, the spine. And then we simply take a long, slow, deep breath in through the nose. If you can, if you're congested, you can breathe through your mouth, but in through the nose and then a long extended exhale out through the nose. And when I do this, I just use my hands. And using my hands helps me to focus. It does other things I won't get into right now, but the body movement actually supports the um, connection of the mind which you get in control because you're actually thinking about moving your hands you're coming to the present and so this is one single thing a very i i'm speaking through it now it's taking more time one single breath in oneness with hashem's energy that we can actually do especially when perpetrated darkness perpetrated fear perpetrated evil appears to be coming at us still in all i'm here i'm i'm here i'm breathing i exist and if i can't do something big to affect the darkness then at least in combination with the few of you here i can just be in my body consciousness so it's breathe in and long exhale The other thing about using your hands, sorry, Nechama, and then I'll end. The other thing about using your hands is that really extending on the exhale is literally expelling carbon dioxide from your body. And when you're in fear, a perpetrated darkness, you're in shallow breathing. 
and we want to be in deep breathing. So I'm sorry I went on there, Nahama, but I want to just share this uh, tool that has really um, supported me. No, that was so, so beautiful and helpful. True oneness of mind, body, and soul. We all needed to hear that. And we're looking forward to hearing more. We can really start now. Um, I'm just going to end with the GROW method here. I think it's beautiful that you're bringing in your confidence tools into the GROW method, which, which I feel such a total oneness. And it's a prayer because the first prayer is Moda'ani Lefanacha. Thank you, Hashem, for that breath of life. And it, we're really embodying it through your tool. Um, and so we know what the wish is, right? We wish to no longer have to operate from this place of fear, but a place of soul. And I want to acknowledge that you have recently published a book called In Soul Alignment. I would say that is the wish that we are in soul alignment because the soul is in the brain and the heart. We want to have an understanding heart where the mind and the heart are totally one. That is soul alignment, that we're operating from a godly plane. And so the fear is just a catalyst to grow the bitachon, to grow a deeper connection with Hashem, which which we are all experiencing right now in this moment. So just take a moment. All there is is this moment. So thank Hashem for this soul alignment that we're feeling right now between each other in our own selves and with the one above, with our creator. So would you like to um, share what is your wish for your own book for to offer people this soul alignment? and some of your own tools during challenging times. Yeah, it's hard. And the wish is hard for women. Why? Because we're taught to not want things. We're taught to not wish for things, which is why I love this grow so much that you've created, Nahama. You know, that you would give us the opportunity with permission to actually want something and to actually wish for something still and all sometimes it's hard for me but for sure today uh in this grow that i'm offering in um concert here with the orchestra that we are making in this moment i wish for uh, my own ability to stay in you know god energy in the energy of hashem so that I can manage my own emotions. I have a personal trauma that I've been in. Um, some of you know, my I lost my husband a year ago. The, his year, first year site is coming up. So because as if nothing else is going on in the world, I still have my personal stuff going on. And when we have our personal stuff going on and then there's darkness uh, in the world, then um, sometimes it's harder to be on that platform of okay. And so I wish for myself and by extension, all who are in my orbit uh, to be in the light. That's what I wish somehow through the darkness uh, to continue to be the light that is needed to shine moment by moment. I just called my cousin whose son is in Israel and I just simply called her to connect, um, you know, uh, in humanity. And just to let her speak instead of being the collected person she is for the mama, the, her, her children, and so on and so forth. And so that's the light um, that each or any of us can create. So thank you so much, Nahama, for letting me do this particular grow uh, today. Thank you. I want to share with everyone Susan's book. I here I'm, This is published by the JGU Press. And this is Susan's fifth book. And I want to share that Susan is so generous that all proceeds from this book goes to Jewish Girls Unite and this Grow platform. So all, all of my books, for all, all of my books. And yeah. we, so, we so appreciate it more than you know. And this is your latest book when it was just published September 20th, just in yeah. time. I'm sure everyone needs it now more than before, an anthology to support your purpose. You know, we're all in this war and everyone is looking to find what is it that I can contribute? What is my purpose? 
So is there something from this book that you'd like to share with us? You know, um, Shandel, I saw your question. I'll tell you my cousin's son in the chat later. Thank you, um, Jared. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, I I, um, I just published this book and I wanna say that um, my first book was published um, through Nahama's generosity after together we created JGU Press and, and I was writing and I was producing material and she said to me, I'm gonna publish, why don't we publish it as a book? And I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And then Leia Karras, the inimitable uh, creative creature she is, has um, done the covers and design of all five of my books. And um, so I thought, I looked through, I haven't even gotten my own publisher's copy yet. So I haven't even gotten a copy of this book yet, but I, um, instead of reading, I didn't wanna read because I want us to be activated here in connected energy with each other, speaking, listening, experiencing, participating. And so um, I wanted to just speak about this idea of alignment a little bit. And that is what I started talking about. The first thing I did is the easiest way to be in alignment, uh, in especially in the face of darkness, is the physical body. And so in order to get our minds and our hearts and souls into maybe even alignment with Hashem, when we're like, what's going on? Like, we want to question, we want to challenge, we want to, you know, yell and scream and cry, like, what you know um then uh, that that's okay you can do that because you're a human god doesn't mind um but the power and the energy is actually when we come back into our bodies and come into our own i see gittel is, is of course knitting uh, that is one of the things of your purpose that you share that you do it may not you know solve uh, the problems but it's your energy your light energy that you give to the world through your gifts and etc so i want to just say again today right now with anybody who would like to join me um i want to invite you to lift up your back i just did it again every time i do this over and over and over right away you can actually feel more confident in this way when we're in darkness, we're like this. We're down, our soul is sad, our emotions are fraught. We may be you know, angry or you know, have whatever scared thoughts in our mind. And then we feel uh, less confident and very much less calm and completely not in control of selves and emotions. Now, whenever you want, you can scream and yell and cry. That's okay too. Uh, and in between times when you want to be in charge, you take you you bring yourself actually into alignment. And so you actually um, I'm just going to lower my desk so you can see you lift your upper body. You can take your hand, your own hand where there's energy and power right in your palm and you can put it on your chest and you can feel that little bit of up, uplift when you lift up your sternum. And even right there, what, when you lift up your sternum uh, in your creating body alignment, your spine is coming into alignment, your, back, your neck is coming into alignment, chin is down a little bit. And what's happening is we're connecting the physical structure of our body. You're, you're lengthening, you're giving space in your torso where your organs are. And your organs are not all in that crouched space when you're down and huddled. And you can feel everything in your stomach is tight and crouched. So as you lift up, as you come into alignment, you can actually use your mind to pretend as if, you know, you have a moment of being okay. And your mind can clear, you can feel lighter, you can feel better just right now. Like Nahama just said, in the present moment. Any one of us who could make everything right would. That is, those are not the gifts that God gave any one single human. God gave every one of us. I just got off the phone with a young man, very anxious, very uh, controlled and controlling and very tight, very uh, you know fearful right now for his children, et cetera, and so forth. And and you know I did this of you know you can feel all that if you choose, but through grow, through grow, if we want, 
we can also come into alignment. When we get the physical body into alignment, that's the easiest thing to do. It's harder to get our thoughts to come into alignment. That would be the next thing. If you want to feel in charge of yourself and your energy, then start with the physical body, use the breath, which actually shifts the, um, it actually shifts your nervous system. You know, when you're in that fear space, when you're in that worry space, if you have people, you know, you can't even, your mind can't even receive the blow after blow after blow of what's coming at us right now, then um, you're into this. Your shoulders go up, you're tense, and you're, 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 you're in near paralysis, it's called freeze. And that simple breath, this simple body movement that I'm talking about, you use your own hands, the power is in your own hands. You can just start at your heart. You can just um, bring your shoulders back and down. And this, please believe me, this is science. This is real. This is not mystical. It's not even spiritual. You are activating the, the better nervous system. It's called the parasympathetic, where you are in rest, digest, and restore. And again, you can just use your hands and you can just bring them down. And in that moment, when you are in the restorative nervous system, that's when you can do a grow. You can pick up the phone and be in okay spirits to call and share your love and light with someone. You can write a letter, you can make a donation, you can do your work so you can make more money so that you can give more money. Because what they need is money. They need money. They need money for supplies and all the things. Um, you can support your family in a healthier, uh, more holistic way. Uh, you might have the wherewithal to actually um, cook with the root vegetables right now, which are uh, the sustenance we need right now to support us, all the root vegetables uh, in this season in particular. And um, you have wherewithal. I call this being in your personal agency. And so being in alignment, that's that's what that is. That's what I mean. And that's what that feels like. Finally, when we're in the physical body alignment, right? When you use your body, is Karen here? I don't know if Karen's here today, but every time she dances, I'm like, that is pure God right there. <laughs> when I watch Karen dance, I have a client who wants to dance. I'm like, watch Karen. <laughs> because um that body movement is godliness. And also it's um, getting you back into your own energy. So you go from the physical, then you can be in charge of your mind. And eventually we can be in the soul energy, which is the highest spiritual energy where we really want to uh, be uh, like affect things, uh, uh, affect things and be in the effect of things. And that's why I sit here, you know, I do my work. And even though it's so coming up for me, I have this personal, you know, um, it just shows up, you know, grief is like that. Um, you know, I have my personal stuff going on. Um, but still in all, those of us who can come into our personal, you know, control of ourselves, it's not that you have to be perfect, like I'm saying, you just saw it. Hello, hello, just came up in me. This happens sometimes. I don't know what that is right now, but I'm going to park that for later. And um, you don't have to be perfect all the time. But if we understand uh, the tool of grow, the tool of coming together daily in this community, the, the tool of the connection circles, then we can use all these things to be in better in a better personal way instead of being in deficit in depression in uh the agony and angst and in the deepest which is fear you're allowed you're entitled you're human but um if we stay in that place we are it's called being co-opted out of our bodies and when you're co-opted out of your bodies then you're not effectuating anything. And so I would say that, you know, we know that there were 
you know, I, I hope it's okay. I just, you know, I've been feeling this very much myself. There were Holocaust, you know, victims in camps still saying the Shema. What was that? Where did that come from? That is us here and now in some way, God forbid, excuse the it possibly inappropriate analogy. But if we can still say the Shema, if we can still be in a connection with Hashem in the light, then the darkness perhaps may always exist, but we can create more light and space around us from being in our body alignment. So I want to thank you so much um, for, you know, inviting me today. Nahama, you know, I love you the absolute most. I'm grateful to you uh, for helping me find my Jewish soul. That is the synergy of our relationship and our connection. And um, I just couldn't be more delighted to be with you in the background of your life. Susan, I put us both here on the spotlight. I wanted to say, I think the Israeli army should bring you out. <laughs> but until that happens, I feel like we are the army. We are the warriors of light here. And I felt like I just got one of those trainings. Like there is no time to allow that fear to control our lives right now. And we can take full responsibility to to use the tools that Hashem has given us, these gifts and this connection circle, the grow, these breathing techniques that are so powerful that align our mind, body, and soul. And the Shema Yisrael is our greatest tool. It's the answer to all the questions that we can't answer with our mind. And we go directly to that oneness, that space in our soul where there are no questions. And so together, would you like to lead us in Shema Yisrael? I mean, you know, it's not usually my thing, but I suppose I can. <laughs> so um, I would cover and say Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Here, O Israel, our Lord God is one. And that that's that's everything together. That's the oneness. It's not just that there is one God, that would be faith. Trust is that God is in everything. There's oneness in the fear. I'm gonna find the oneness in my fear, in my sorrow, in my shallow breathing. I'm gonna bring Hashem into it with a breath that I have the power of my neshama to create this alignment. So that is a whole new way to really connect to the Shema. Thank you, Susan. That was so moving and emotionally healing. There's one more thing, if I may. Yes, sure. So I would like to offer each and every person here uh, an opportunity to do something extraordinary you know in our little tiny worlds uh, that we're in we're not usually in the world of extraordinary but that's really only because we don't see the miracle of our own personal lives as extraordinary and so i have an idea that i would like to put out here and that is this I would like to invite each and every one of us to create a very brief grow for one soldier in the IDF. So that would look something like making a little, vi little video that says to you, this soldier in the IDF, I'm speaking directly to you. I want you to know that I'm grateful for your strength I'm grateful for your fortitude. I'm grateful for the fact that you are standing up. I recognize the difficulty for you. I recognize the fear you may be in, but I know that in oneness with Hashem, you feel the strength, you feel the conviction, and you are in faith 
and trust. And I wish for you strength and safety. And I wish most of all for you to have love in your heart for humanity, despite what it is that you're going through and also being subjected to you. And I wanna send my personal love directly to you. I would like to uh, invite everyone uh, to make a little video and you could send it to the Hama and she can start to post them because as I am a certain each and every single one of you have heard a, a video of one or another soldier um, coming to us, speaking to us, right? I heard it with my own ears, my eyes, my brain, my heart, my soul felt it. You have the opportunity to do that for them. And so um, on behalf of JGU and the Grow Connection Network, I would start your video with, my name is Susan, I'm a member of the Grow Connection Network, and I'm doing this grow for you. Thank you, Nahama. That is such a beautiful oneness goal in oneness with Hashem and our soldiers. They, they need these emotional connecting words. And grow is the way to achieve emotional connection. So tomorrow, we're going to focus on the difference between emuna and bitachon, which means faith and trust. Faith is where it stays in your head. And the moment fear sets in, the fear is just a, is just a belief that I, that I had. <laughs> I still have, but it's kind of hidden. Bitachon is where I'm growing that belief, that faith that there is a God into my heart in this moment of fear. It's a living connection with Hashem. And we, we want to transmit these feelings to our soldiers through this emotional connecting language. It will make a difference. And I hear that they, more than even the supplies, they are reading these notes when they go to battle. They're taking it with them. This is their part of their ammunition. Imagine we can be a part of that. So thank you, Susan, for that incredible ideas. Yes, let's say, um, please everyone say to him today for Baruch Ben Shoshana Malka. He should have a full, complete healing. And, and so tomorrow we're going to discuss how faith is when it's just in the head. It's something we were given and trust is how to create that alignment of our faith, our beliefs with us in our daily feelings and actions and in total oneness and alignment with Hashem and others too. So that was really beautiful. Um, we will do breakout rooms for you to take this further and integrate. Tomorrow, we're going to integrate it into our cooking. We're going to create a healthy recipe for Shabbos with our Grow mentors, Shandel Leanne from California. I'm really looking forward because I have some gluten-free children who will really be excited because I don't usually cook gluten-free. Um, so the recipe will be in the WhatsApp. So please join the WhatsApp group that I posted. And... Um, looking forward to using all these gifts that Hashem has given us to connect to him in trust and be tachon. Um, before we get into breakout rooms, Yehudis wants to share a moment of victory in this battle of light. Go ahead. Please unmute yourself. I said, I'm sorry, I missed it. I didn't realize 1030 passed by. So I only got the last trickles of Susan. And that was so beautiful. Thank you so much. First of all, I love your colors too, the blue. <laughs> it's good. Um, so I came two days ago. I know that my post in this war, um, I know part of it was the food to my kids. And um, like I'm joining this grow community to help me support myself even more towards this because 
you know, I just want to get it done. And I know that it's a big deal. I was in Jerusalem um, last week um, through when the war broke out. And what happened was that I was in the house or in the apartment that we were renting with our kids. So while other people were able to go to put on to fill in, give it to tea or whatever else with the soldiers, I was kind of clear that my post is being with my kids inside. Um, when I, so yesterday, so I even joined another group yesterday and it wasn't really speaking to me. Like the person was talking and all, but then when we said Shema together at one o'clock and she said, Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, the videos of the soldiers talking to me came, you know, came in my head and they have such confidence and they tell you like, guys, we're in it together. You do your Tehillim, you do your Allah, but more the strength that they speak, um, like the confidence and the like, you know, the mysterious nefesh of how they go with joy. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give my all. So I felt it in my job. Like, I'm a soldier too, and I'm going to do that as well. Like, you are on the front lines. I'm going to be in my front lines with as energetic and as excited as you guys are. Like, you guys are amazing. Um, and then I was confirmed with that, with the, um, I get letters of the Rebbe every day and the WhatsApp was saying like, you're saying that you're like annoyed about your job kind of thing. Like, it's not your job. It's God's job for you. Like, no. Anyways, yesterday, <gasps> with all of you guys' support, I had supper ready before the kids came home. I literally wanted it posted on the Good News of Israel WhatsApp chat. Like, this is big news. And even though the kids like didn't come home and like sit down as, you know, in my dreams, it would be nice. And we all connect and stuff. And my husband reminded me like, Yehudis, this is great. Don't panic that they're not coming to the table. Like just keep it. <laughs> so I did, thank God. So like one kid was there for an hour. And then after an hour and a half, two more kids came. So that was just, it was very interesting because I stayed in the kitchen and like, I felt like that's the right thing to do. Like I'm a womb and I'm not busy making supper. That's not why I'm in the kitchen. I'm just being here. If they want me, they'll come to me. That was so wholesome. And I hope it happens again. But that was my fight, <laughs> my victory. Well, not my, thank you, God, you know, for that. And it's exciting. <laughs> Wow. Wow. You heard us. And even you have a sense of humor. I know like, like comes from your family, <laughs> a real gift that you have. Wow. Well, what, what do they say in the army when someone has a victory? <laughs> I don't know. But I love how they sing it to themselves. Like we are lions and who can hurt lions? Who can scare lions? We're not scared. They have a chant like that. I don't know what they sing in the Hamas, but I really like this kind of chant. Thank you. And may you grow from strength to strength. And thank you so much for sharing because your, your victory is our victory. Your success is our success because we are all one. And yes, that is good news for Israel. Like they always say, is it good news for the Jews? Yep, it's good news for the Jews. May we always share good news with each other mm -hmm. and be there for each other through the highs and lows. And we know that from the low, we grow. I love you all. And you have the opportunity to continue to connect in these connection circles um, where you can put on your cameras and meet fellow grow sisters in breakout rooms. So I'm going to open all rooms and wish you all a day of oneness and soul alignment. And thank you again, Susan, for bringing us closer today to our souls.